Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zero Davra. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today I'll continue part number 14 of our BusyBox series. The more command displays text one screen at a time. So more is a filter for paging through text one screen at a time. It does not provide as many options or enhancements as less, but is nevertheless quite useful and simple to use. When displaying a file, more can be controlled with a set of commands loosely based on the text editor Vim. Some commands can be preceded by a decimal number, and the more uses the values of the following environment variables, if they are defined. The more variable defaults more options. If this variable is set, more reads it as the default set of options to use. Any option specified on the command line will override the options specified in the more variable. Then we have the shell variable, the, the current shell in use. This variable is normally set by the shell itself at login time and the term variable, which is the current terminal type. This value is used by a more to determine the proper way to manipulate the screen. All files accessible in the Unix system are arranged in one big tree, the file hierarchy, rooted at the slash directory. These files can be spread out uh, over several devices. The mount command serves to attach the file system found on some device to the big tree, the big uh, file system. Conversely, the umount command will detach it again. The standard form of the mount command is mount -t type device there. This tells the kernel to attach the file system found on device, which is of type type, at the directory there. The previous contents, if any, an owner and modes of there become invisible as long as this file system remains mounted. The path name there refers to uh, the root of the file system on the device. Three forms of invocation do not actually mount anything. So mount -h prints a help message. Mount -v prints a version string and just mount -l -t type lists all mounted file systems of type type. The uh, PROC file system is not associated with a special device and when mounting it, an arbitrary keyword such as PROC can be used instead of a device specification. The customary choice uh, none is less fortunate. The error message none busy from umount can be confusing. Most devices are indicated by a file name of a block special device like slash dev slash sda1. But there are other possibilities. For example, in the case of an NFS mount, the device may look like uh, uh, knuth.cwi.nl colon slash there. It is possible to indicate a block special device using its volume label or WID. And uh, the defile slash etc slash fstab may contain lines describing what devices are usually mounted where using which options. This file is issued in three ways. The command mount hyphen a hyphen t type hyphen capital O opt list, usually given in a boot script, causes all file systems mentioned in fstab of the proper type and or having not or not having the proper options to be mounted as indicated. Uh, except for those whose line contains the no auto keyword. When mounting a file system mentioned in fstab, it suffices to give a, a, only the device or only the mount point. Normally, only the super user can mount file systems. However, when fstab contains the user options on a line, anybody can mount the corresponding system. Thus, given the line slash dev slash cd rom slash cd iso 9660 raw user no auto on hide, any user can mount the ISO 9660 file system found on his CD-ROM using the command mount slash dev slash CD-ROM or mount slash CD. Only the user that mounted the file system can unmount it again. If any user should be able to unmount, then use users instead of user in the F tab line. The owner option is similar to the user option, with the restriction that the user must be the owner of the special file. This may be useful for slash dev slash fd uh, if a login script makes the console user owner of this device. The group option is similar with the restriction that the user must be a member of the group of the special file. The program's mount and new mount maintain a list of currently mounted file systems on the file uh, slash etc slash mtab. If no arguments are given to mount, this list is printed. When the proc file system is mounted, say at slash proc, the files uh, slash etc slash mtab and slash proc slash mounts have very similar contents. The former has somewhat more information, such as the mount options used, but is not necessarily up to date. It is possible to replace the slash etc slash mtab file by a symbolic link to slash proc slash mounts. And especially when you have very large numbers of mounts, things will be uh, much faster with that symlink. But some information is lost that way. Uh, and in particular, working with the loop device will be less convenient and using the user option will fail. MT performs a special tape operation on the tape drive. The default tape device to operate on is taken uh, from the file slash usr slash include slash sys slash mtio.h when MT is compiled. 
It can be overridden by giving a device file name in the environment variable tape or by a command line option, which also overrides the uh, environment variable. The device must be either a character, special file or a remote tape drive. To use a tape drive on another machine as the, the archive, use a file name that starts with hostname. The hostname can be preceded by a username and an add symbol to access the remote tape drive as that user if you have permission to do so, typically on entering that user's R host file. Unique abbreviations are accepted. Not all operations are available on all systems or work on all types of tape drives. Some operations optionally take a repeat count which can be given after the operation name and defaults to 1. The Linux MV command is used to move a file or a directory in a Linux system. When we move a file or a directory to a new location, we change its location. That means we didn't duplicate the file or directory and did not leave a copy in the original location. So understand the statement. We can also use the move command to rename a file in the same directory or use it to move multiple files to a new location. The nameif command renames network interfaces based on MAC addresses. When no arguments are given, the slash etc slash MAC tab file is read. Each line of it contains an interface name and an Ethernet MAC address. Comments are allowed starting with a hashtag. Otherwise, the interfaces specified on the command line are processed. Nameif looks for the interface with a given MAC address and renames it to the name given. When the hyphen S argument is given, all error messages go to the system log. When the hyphen C argument is given with a file name, that file is read instead of the slash etc slash MAC tab default. Nameif should be run before the interface is up, otherwise it will fail. NC is a command which runs netcat, a simple Unix utility that reads and writes data across network connections using the TCP or UDP protocols. It's designed to be a reliable backend tool that can be used directly or driven by other programs and scripts. At the same time, it's a feature-rich network and debugging program and exploration tool since it can create almost any kind of connection you would need and has several interesting built-in capabilities. Common uses include simple TCP proxies, shell script-based HTTP clients and servers, network daemon testing, a SOX or HTTP proxy command for SSH, poor scanning, banner grabbing, file transfers, uh, it can be used as a local chat program, sending emails and so on. Destination can be a numerical IP address or a symbolic host name, unless the hyphen N option is given. In general, a destination must be specified unless the hyphen L option is given, in which case the local host is used. For Unix domain sockets, uh, a destination is required and is a socket path to connect to or listen on if the hyphen L option is given. Ports can be a single integer or a range of ports. Uh, ranges are in the form of a minimum port number, then a hyphen, then the maximum port number. And in general, a destination port must be specified unless the hyphen capital U option is given. So let's uh, talk a bit about the client-server module. Uh, it is quite simple to build a very basic client-server module using uh, netcat. On one console, start uh, netcat listening on a specific port for a connection. So for example, the command would be nc-l1234. Netcat is now listening on the port 1234 for a connection. On a second console, or a second machine, connect to the machine and port being listened on. So nc localhost 1234. There should now be a connection between the ports. Anything typed at the second console will be concatenated to the first, and vice versa. After the connection has been set up, nc does not really care which side is being used as a server, and which side is being used as a client. And the connection may be terminated using uh, control D. The netstat command is used to print network connections, routing tables, interface statistics, masquerade connections, and multicast memberships. Netstat means network statistics, and is a command line tool that displays network connections, uh, both incoming and outgoing, routing tables, and a number of network interface stats. Network uh, interface controller, or software-defined network interface, and network protocol statistics. It is available on Unix-like operating systems including OS X, Linux, Solaris, and BSD, and on Windows NT based operating systems including Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7 and Windows 8. It's used uh, for finding problems on a network and to determine the amount of traffic on a network as a performance measurement. The NSLOOKUP command is used to query internet name servers interactively for information. NSLOOKUP, which stands for uh, Name Server Lookup, is a useful tool for finding out information about a named domain. By default, NSLOOKUP will translate a domain name to an IP address or vice versa. For instance, to find out what the IP address of Microsoft.com is, you could run the command NSLOOKUP Microsoft.com and you would receive a response like this. So first we have server colon 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 then address colon the same sequence of eights uh, followed by a hashtag 53. Then you would see non-authoritative answer. 
and below that you'd have name colon microsoft.com address colon an IP address and again name colon microsoft.com address colon another IP address a different one here the sequence of eights is uh, the address of our system's domain name server this is the uh, server our system is configured to use to translate domain names into IP addresses. Hashtag 53 indicates that we are communicating with it on port 53, which is the standard port number domain name servers use to accept queries. Below this, we have our lookup information for Microsoft.com. Our name server returned two entries, two IP addresses. This indicates that Microsoft.com uses a round robin setup to distribute server load. When you access Microsoft.com, you may be directed to either of these servers and your packets will be routed to the, to the correct destination. You can see that we have received a non-authoritative answer to our query. Uh, an answer is authoritative only if our DNS has the complete zone file information for the domain in question. More often, our DNS will have a cache of information representing the last authoritative answer it received when it made a similar query. This information is passed on to you, but the server qualifies it as non-authoritative because the information was recently received from an authoritative source, but the DNS uh, server is not itself that authority. We can also perform the above operation in reverse by providing the IP address rather than the domain name. The NS record of a domain is a map of all name servers that are authoritative for that domain. You can query a domain's NS record using the option hyphen type equals NS. This output gives us the names of the four Microsoft.com name servers which actually belong to the msft.net domain, according to our DNS's non-authoritative information. If there is an available source for authoritative answers, it's listed at the bottom of the output. The MX record is a map of mail exchange servers for a domain. When you send email to a domain, for example at microsoft.com, your mail is routed to Microsoft's MX servers. When you query a domain for its MX record using the hyphen type equals MX option, here the email uh, exchange address is prefixed with a number, uh, usually 10. If there were more than one email exchangers, they would each have a different number, with the lower numbers representing a higher priority. So if, if there were another exchanger uh, with the prefix 5, that server would take precedence over a server with the prefix 10. The SOA, or Start of Authority record, for a domain provides technical information about the domain. It can be queried with the option hyphen type equal SOA. The information listed here is the cached version held by our domain name server. It includes origin, which is the authority from which the information originated, mail address, which is the email address of the domain administrator. The first dot would be an at symbol in an email address, so here the email address is msnhst at microsoft.com. Uh, it would have the serial, which is the revision data for this information in the form of year, month, day. Refresh, a number of re representing uh, the interval in seconds after which the secondary name server will check the primary name server for an updated revision of this information. This information tells us that the secondary Microsoft name server information is never more than 2 hours or uh, 7,200 seconds out of date. Retry, the second name server will wait this many seconds before attempting to reconnect to the primary name server after a failed attempt. Expire, which is the secondary name server's cache of primary name server's information and will always be considered invalid after this many seconds. And the minimum, the secondary name server's cache of the primary name server's information should not be refreshed if this amount of time has not elapsed since the last refresh. We can also view all available NS records for a domain by using the option hyphen type equals any. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.